In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve optimization problems involving cylinders. So suppose we want to construct a cylindrical can with no lid. If we have only 18 squared centimeters of sheet metal, what is the largest possible volume of our can? All right, so we've got a nice diagram shown here. It's a cylinder, radius r, height h, and the thing that we want to optimize is the volume of the can. So we should write down the volume formula. Volume for a cylinder is equal to the area of the base, which would be pi r squared times the height, which is h. Now we want to maximize this volume, and in order to do that, we need to turn this into a function of a single variable. So we need to get some other equation relating r and h that we can use to solve for one of these variables in terms of the other, and then sub it back into this volume formula. Now to get this other equation, let's think what other information do we have? Well, we know that we only have 18 square centimeters of sheet metal, so that's telling us something about the surface area. The surface area is equal to 18. And we can write the surface area in terms of r and h. The surface area is just the base area, which is pi r squared, just a single base, the bottom base, because it has no lid, and then plus the lateral area, which is the circumference of the base times the height. So plus 2 pi r times the height h, that's got to be equal to 18. So now why don't we solve for h in terms of r? h, because it just appears once in the equation, doesn't have any exponent, so it'll be simple to solve. First, we'll subtract off that pi r squared. So we'll get 2 pi r h equals 18 minus pi r squared, and then divide by 2 pi r. You get h equals 18 minus pi r squared all over 2 pi r. We can go ahead and sub that into our volume formula. So volume is equal to pi r squared times h, and our expression for h is 18 minus pi r squared all over 2 pi r. And we see that there are some things that cancel here. First of all, this pi, and then the pi in the denominator. And then this r in the denominator can cancel with one of these r's, decreasing the power from 2 to 1. So volume is equal to just r times 18 minus pi r squared over 2, which means it's equal to 18r minus pi r cubed over 2. And why don't we just simplify that a little bit more? 18 over 2 is 9, so 9r, then minus 1 half pi r cubed. All right, so that's our volume function, and now we want to maximize that volume function. And we do that by finding the stationary points. In other words, where the derivative v prime of r is equal to zero. So taking the derivative here, derivative of 9r would just be 9, and then minus, applying the power rule here, bring down that exponent, so minus 3 halves pi, and then decrease that exponent by 1 to get r squared. That's equal to zero, and then we just solve for r squared. So how about add 3 halves pi r squared to both sides, get 9 equals 3 halves pi r squared. Multiply both sides by 2 thirds to get 6 equals pi r squared. Divide by pi to get 6 over pi equals r squared, and take the square root. Square root of 6 over pi equals r. Positive square root because r is a physical quantity. So this is our stationary point here. And why don't we verify that this is indeed a maximum of the volume function? So we'll do that using the second derivative test. Take the second derivative, the double prime of r. When we do that, the constant 9 just goes away. Do the power rule on this r squared. That becomes 2r, and then times that negative 3 halves pi, we just get negative 3 pi r. So that means the volume second derivative at r equals root of 6 over pi is going to be negative 3 pi times the root of 6 over pi. We could simplify that, but really all that matters is that's negative. And if the second derivative is negative, that means the function is concave down in the neighborhood where r is root of 6 over pi. So that means we are indeed at a max. Great, so we found the value of r, which yields a maximum. 
and now we just have to actually evaluate the volume function at this value of r. So the volume function evaluated when r is root of 6 over pi is equal to 9 times the root of 6 over pi, then minus 1 half pi times the root of 6 over pi cubed, which would make 9 times the root of 6 over pi minus 1 half pi times, well, root 6 over pi squared makes 6 over pi, and then we still have a root 6 over pi left over, and we can simplify this. This is just 9 root of 6 over pi minus pi's cancel, and then 6 over 2 is 3, so minus 3 root of 6 over pi, which makes 6 root of 6 over pi. And let's put some units on that. Units of volume are units of length cubed, and length is in centimeters, so centimeters cubed. So there we go. There is the largest possible volume of our can that is limited to 18 square centimeters of sheet metal. Here's the next problem. Suppose that we want to build a cylindrical can with volume 96 pi centimeters cubed. The can will have a partially open top consisting of a hole that has area equal to half the area of the base. What is the radius of the can with the smallest surface area? Okay, so again we've got a diagram, the base has radius r, the height is h, and we've got this partially open top that has kind of a washer of material around the exterior, but in the interior there is a hole, and we know that hole has area equal to half the area of the base. So small circle here is half the area of the big circle there. Now we want to find what radius will minimize the surface area. So that means we need to construct a surface area function in terms of radius and then minimize that. Why don't we start by just writing a formula for the surface area. So surface area, S is equal to the sum of the base area, the top area, and the lateral area. Base area is just the area of the circle, pi r squared, and we know that the hole here has half that area, so the leftover washer part is also half that area. So add half the area plus one half pi r squared, and then the lateral area, which is equal to the circumference times the height. So plus two pi r times h. And why don't we just simplify that a little bit? So s is equal to three halves pi r squared plus two pi r h. Now we'd like to make s a function of r. So we'd like to write h in terms of r, and to do that we need to figure out what is the relationship between r and h. So what other information are we given? Well, we're also told that the volume is 96 pi cubic centimeters. So we can write down an equation for that. The volume is 96 pi. And we know that the volume is just equal to the area of the base, pi r squared, times the height, h. So pi r squared h is equal to 96 pi, and that means we can solve for h in terms of r. h is just equal to 96 pi over pi r squared, and the pi's will cancel, so h is just equal to 96 over r squared. We can put that into our surface area function, which we'll now read as 3 halves pi r squared plus 2 pi r times 96 over r squared. And we can simplify this function. It's just 3 halves pi r squared plus 2 pi r times 96 over r squared. So 2 times 96 is 192. And then we have our pi. And then r over r squared makes just over r. Now we finally got our surface area function in terms of a single variable and we can go ahead and optimize it. So that just involves finding the stationary points, which are the points such that the derivative, s prime of r, is equal to zero. So taking the derivative, using the power rule here on the r squared, we get 2r, and then that multiplies by 3 halves pi to get just 3 pi r, and then 192 pi over r is like 192 pi times r to the power of negative 1, so power rule brings out that negative 1, so minus 100, 
92 pi, decrease that power by one, so r to the negative two, so over r squared, that's equal to zero. And now to clean up this equation, since we know that r is non-zero, it's a physical length, and this can has to have some volume and surface area, since r is not equal to zero, we can multiply through this equation by r to cancel out this r squared in the bottom. So we'll go ahead and multiply both sides by r squared, so r squared times three pi r minus 192 pi over r squared is equal to r squared times zero. So that makes three pi r cubed minus 192 pi is equal to zero. And now we just solve for r cubed. So three pi r cubed is equal to 192 pi, which means that r cubed is equal to 192 pi over three pi. And that simplifies r cubed is just equal to 192 over three, which is 64. So r is the cube root of 64, which is four. And you can verify that indeed, this is a minimum of this surface area function. You can check the second derivative and it will come out positive, I assure you. And then our final conclusion then is that the radius of the can with the small surface area is given by r equals four. Now let's put units on that. Units of length are in centimeters here. So r equals four centimeters. So now we know how to solve optimization problems involving cylinders. And in the future, we'll continue to practice solving optimization problems with other shapes, such as shapes inscribed in circles.